Men with diabetes have got a risk of developing sexual problems. Most people will never get them, but unfortunately you are at a higher risk than you would have been without diabetes. Whether it's gaining an erection or whether it's keeping one long enough or hard enough for sex, this is known as erectile dysfunction. There are lots of causes of erectile dysfunction though, some of which are related to diabetes, some of which have got nothing to do with it. Another thing that people forget about is that with type 2 diabetes in particular and with increasing weight, men's testosterone levels themselves can fall. This can cause problems with erections, but it can also cause problems with your feelings, how interested you are in sex, for example. And so if you find that your interest has really dropped off, that can be a sign that there's something wrong as well. So even if the mechanics work, if the feeling is gone, or if your urge to have sex is gone, that can be important too. And again, it's actually very easy to treat, so it's worth bringing it up if the doctor forgets to. One of the commonest causes of erectile dysfunction or erection problems in men with diabetes is actually problems with the blood vessels. So the plumbing to the penis gets damaged and affected just as the plumbing to your feet or the plumbing to your heart can get affected. Nobody's embarrassed to talk about angina attacks or pain coming from the heart, but people just don't want to bring up the fact that the blood supply to the penis isn't as good as it used to be. This is important for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because, getting, because treatment is available and getting treatment will help you get your sex life back and make you feel better about yourself. Just improving your blood sugars makes a big difference there. It's also important though because damage to the blood vessels in the penis can be a marker that there might be damage to blood vessels somewhere else. And so if you bring it up, we've got a heads up, we've got a red alert in advance. Maybe we should have a double check of your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your heart. And the somewhere else that I get worried about as a doctor is in the heart. So problems getting erections can sometimes be a clue that there are problems brewing in the heart as well. That's why it's important to get checked and early. There's lots of other causes of erectile problems though. So I've talked about the plumbing, that's the blood supply to the penis. The nerve supply can also get damaged and that can be a little bit more difficult to control but actually just improving your blood sugars makes a big difference there. How does that process go when you're discussing that with, with your diabetic nurse? What do they tell, tell you to look out for as a, as a diabetic? All they do is, is she asks me, do I have any problems with erectile dysfunction? And the simple answer is no. If it was different, I would be honest with her. There's no point in uh, trying to hide behind it. You know, if you've got a problem, you've got to talk to the people who are looking after you. If you've got any concerns about your ability to get erections or your interest in having sex, the first thing to do is go and talk to your GP. Your GP will be able to do a very simple blood test first thing in the morning to check what your testosterone level is and we'll have an answer as to that bit straight away. If the testosterone level is okay though, it may be due to other problems and so then you'll be referred to a specialist or start on a treatment. It becomes a great worry, a great worry to people like the husband or the wife and sometimes they don't communicate about it and that doesn't stop doesn't stop one worrying about the other. For instance, uh, a chap can go in and see the doctor, he can come out and say to the wife, how did, how did it go? And say, mm, fine, all right, end of conversation. Doesn't stop his partner worrying about um, you know, what she thinks might have been going on. If you're worried about your interest in sex or your ability to have sex or get an erection, I suppose the first thing to do is admit it. The second thing is to talk to your partner. And then the third thing is ideally to go together to talk about it with your GP.